Good morning to all those tuning in. This is the Web of Lemon, and today we are back to playing Metaphobia. So, let's get right into it. Um, I thought I... So I'm turning my music down to a... Um, minimum, mostly just because I felt like it's way too overpowering um, over the dialogue. Thank you for your time, sir. I'll let you be now. No trouble at all. It was a pleasure to meet you, Richard. Good luck with your investigation. And thanks again for helping me. You're a good and man. Don't mention it. I hope no one minds me playing games like this. I actually really enjoy them and it gives me a decent break over talking a shit ton. Granted, I do actually like talking during my videos, but this is definitely a very different experience. Um, so, you know, that's something. Um, so, Hello, officer. let's do it. Good afternoon, sir. Can I help you? I'm here to visit Michael Coltrane. And you are? Uh, a friend of his. Mr. Coltrane is not allowed visitors. There's been a court order. I really need to see him. It's urgent. No exceptions, sir. The only people allowed to see him are his doctors and those with explicit permission from the court. I cannot let you in. I see. Um, does that mean Judy will forge me a fake document? I mean, we have been relying on Judy for like this whole adventure. And it's kind of... Hey, Judy. Hello, Richie. It's kind of scary how much to help me this adventure something. would be like... Again? Not You're happening really enjoying this newfound life of crime, aren't you? I prefer to think of myself as a detective. And where do the clues lead today, Sherlock? Prison hospital. I want to talk to Michael Coltrane. Michael Coltrane. Michael Coltrane. Crazy Mike? That's the one. You know him? Of course. He was a modern day Jack the Ripper. At least that's what the papers called him in the 80s. You want to talk to this guy? You're insane. Thanks for the encouragement. Just saying, he went on a killing spree through the city. What does he have to do with your case? Detective Proctor told me he was the killer in the last of the political assassinations. He might be able to tell me something. Problem is, he went insane just before they caught him. Huh. Wow. Look at you, knowing all the top secret information before me. I'm a little jealous. I'm starting to get the hang of this. You think you can forge some paperwork to get me in? Sure, give me a second. This should get you access to most of the prison wing. It's a clearance pass for a visiting psychiatrist. The guard won't look twice at it. Just don't forget, your name is Dr. Frank Villarmo. You're my hero, Judy. What would I do without you? You know, not many people would help someone like me. Not after I left everyone I love. After I left you. Richard, I don't know if I can ever forgive you. I hoped that you would come back one day, but when you disappeared, that hurt. That hurt for a long time. Seeing you again is a little like picking at the scars, you know? If you want me to leave... No, stay. I need to know why you left. I need to hear you say it. I told you. I had my reasons. Richard, I don't care what you say. Just don't avoid the question anymore. Why did you leave? It happened gradually. I felt myself pulling away from everyone. Getting further and further. And then I reached a point when I couldn't speak to anyone. Why not? I was depressed. I would lie awake all night, unable to sleep. And when the morning came, I couldn't get out of bed. That's why you wouldn't sleep here? 
I didn't want to put that on you. You could have told me. I, I could have helped. We all could have. Patricia, Miranda, everyone. I know. I chose to be alone. But then, being alone became too much. I couldn't escape the feeling. I started... What? Tell me. I started sleeping with my models. I thought it would cure my depression. And it would work for a little while. I would forget how I felt. I'd forget everything. I would convince myself I was happy again. But before the night was over, everything would come crashing down on me again. Richard, I... Don't think you weren't good enough. I cared about you, I did. But once I started with that, uh, I couldn't look you in the eye. I was so ashamed. Then I ran away. So that I wouldn't have to see you. You or anyone else. I don't want forgiveness. I don't deserve that. And after I finish investigating my father's murder, I'll leave. I won't bother you again. I had no idea. I'm... I'm glad you told me. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. It's the least I can do. I'll talk to you soon. I should go. Sure. Holy fuck. That was, um... A super... Like, realistic... Chat? Like, holy fuck. Like, granted, I'm not defending his actions. His actions were definitely wrong. But, like... I can understand where he's coming from and why he did what he did, but I can also understand her reaction to everything too. So it just kind of makes it, um... It's no use. He won't let me in just like that. Ah, <sighs> right. I need to actually give him the paper stuff. Um, it kind of makes everything like... a lot more in-depth and everything. Hello, sir. I am Dr. Frank Villiarmo. I would like to examine Michael Coltrane. Good afternoon, doctor. Let me see. All right, you're good to go. Are you new? I haven't seen you here before. Yes, I've just arrived from the University of Alabama to study Mr. Coltrane. He is a fascinating subject, I must say. You could say that. Just be careful. The glass is bulletproof, so you're safe, but he does try to intimidate new people. Don't worry. I'm used to that. Can I be honest with you, doctor? Of course. This guy is mentally ill. I mean seriously deranged. I don't understand why you're all so fascinated by him. The most disturbing cases are always the most interesting. Hmm. I'll say this. He has gotten better over time been here 30 years, and when he's medicated, he can at least speak coherently. The treatments are working, then? Yeah, maybe. Anyway, good luck. Thank you. <sighs> Alright. This is going to be a personal pet peeve, granted, but, like, I really hate how people see and treat mental illnesses. And it's kind of annoying, I guess. Like, people either um, demonize them or sexualize them. And I don't know if I'm comfortable with either. Like, for example, with autism, people think a lot of autistic people are these, like, socially dysfunctional people who might be smart in, like, one or two subjects, but, like, overall need to be like helped i guess but in a lot of cases you won't even recognize an autistic person and like yeah a lot of them are smart but like a lot of them also are like have varying degrees on like how good they are with integrating into society and like taking care of themselves and a lot of them actually can take care of themselves so by like 
demeaning all everyone with like autistic as just like dumb and stupid is like very demeaning it's like just treat them like normal people um and like people sexualize a lot of other mental illnesses like sociopathy and psychopathy in like movies and um books and other media and it's like that's fucking disturbing um like it's not even called sociopathy and psychopathy anymore it's called um antisocial personality disorder or something like that and it's like it has a wide range of like um severity but like don't sexualize it these people are not something you should be like sexualizing or going after but like also don't demonize them either it's not fair hello We can either introduce ourselves via lying or being honest. Um, there's no point in lying, I don't think. We might as well just be honest. My name is Richard. I know you don't believe me, but I need your help. No, not another shrink. I had enough of you people. I'm not crazy. I know what I saw. I'm not a doctor, Michael. I just want to hear your story. I want to know what you saw back in the 80s. I already told my story a thousand times. They got it on tape and everything. Ask one of your shrink friends to play it for you. I told you, Michael. I'm not a doctor. Yeah, right. Ain't nobody come through here but doctors and guards. Beat it, duck. You're right. I'm not supposed to be here. I forged documents and snuck in just to see you. My father was killed. I don't know you. I don't know your father. Not my problem. He was killed by the same people who hired you all those years ago. And what do you want from me? I can't help you. You're the only witness still alive. You think I know something? I know something happened to you. You're not the same man you once were. The people who killed my father, they changed you. Well, that may be true, but it doesn't matter. Nobody believes me. I do. Hold up, if you ain't a cop, and you ain't a doctor, how did you find out about me? Detective Proctor told me about you. Proctor? Proctor, yeah, that guy, he's still alive. More or less. Listen, Michael, I risked a lot just coming here. You're the only one who can help me. Please, I beg you, tell me everything you know about these people. I don't think you're crazy. I trust you. So please, trust me. All right, then. Hi, right, so maybe... Okay, this is my logic. But maybe if we say we admire his work, this can put him in a little bit of a mood. You've been locked away a long time. So you probably don't know, but you're kind of famous. You were one of the best at your job. Some might even say you were a legend. Me? A legend? Really? Look, I don't condone what you did, but I am impressed you managed to get so close to so many important people. Politicians, world leaders. It's not easy. I was good, wasn't I? But I hated every second of it. So why did you do it? The money, why else? 800,000 to kill one guy. People on the street kill for a few dollars. I thought of myself as a higher class of killer. But a legend? No, I never thought I'd be a legend. Alright, so... Actually, kind of interesting, actually. Who would have ever thought that, like, he didn't actually like the whole murdering people thing? But then again, it does make sense in some aspects as um, people do a lot of things um, for money. 
And, like, it's kind of understandable, too. Huh. All right, let's hear the story. Tell me exactly what happened. But I remember like it was yesterday. By that time, I already had three kills in the books and a nice pile of money in the bank. So I said to myself, that's it. I'm done. Then this guy all dressed in black shows up one day, says he'll pay me 800 grand to kill some guy. He puts 100 grand in cash right there in front of my hand and says, this is just for listening to me. You get the rest when the job's done. So I agreed. I'd do one more job. Who did you have to kill? The target was some guy I'd never heard of, but apparently he was famous. Some kind of president of the Peace of America organization. Tyler Green, if I remember right. To this day, I don't know why this hippie was so important. Tyler Green was the man who inspired my father's entire political philosophy. Ah, the pieces start to fall together. So I did the job. The guy in black said to meet him in this shack way out on the outskirts of the city. He asked for pictures, for proof. Oh, oh God, no, not again. What's wrong? I I'll see it again. No, G get out of my head. Michael, look at me. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Sometimes I have these seizures as the shrinks call them. Are you okay to keep talking? Sure, where was I? Oh yeah, the guy in black says how satisfied they are with my work. Says they got my money right there. But first, he wants to sit and talk. He says they want me to work for them full time, but doesn't say who they are. By this point, I don't really care. Mafia, CIA, the Russians, whatever. I just wanted to get my money and get out of there. And then it happened. The room was quiet. Kinda like this room right now. But then it got too quiet. No sound at all. He started talking again, but his mouth was closed. What do you mean? God help me, I never experienced anything like it. He told me they needed me. They wanted me to be one of them. Who were they? I don't know. He just kept sending his thoughts to my head, and I heard every word just as I can hear you now. But that wasn't the worst of it. Someone else was talking. At first, I thought they were in the room, too, but there was nobody there. He spoke to me. He tried to convince me. He showed me pictures in my head. He showed me their incredible wealth, the power they had. He showed me how they control the world. I saw it all with my head, as if I'd experienced it myself. Like a memory, these people are not from this world. They're monsters, aliens from another planet. I started screaming. I left the money on the table and ran. And the whole time I was running, I could hear the voices in my head. The voices started speaking some nonsense language, whispering like they were right next to me. I went back to my apartment and lay on the floor for what must have been days. Do you still hear them, Michael? I heard them for a week or two after that. Then all of a sudden they stopped. But sometimes... What? Sometimes I see things. What things? Things not of this world. We are slaves, Richard. I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to see these things. I envy those I killed. Living in this hell is my true punishment. Don't worry, Michael. Everything will be all right. You don't know how often I hear that phrase. It's never going to be all right. Never. Not as long as they exist. He may be hiding something important. I should check out Coltrane's apartment in case there's any evidence left behind. That is, if the apartment still exists. That's it for now. That is, um, 
so oh, fuck I especially after um, that I love 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 the voice acting in this game it's just so good on top of um, just on top of uh, like the interactions between characters too like um, for example these two right here she has a lot of history with him and it's like not all good but her reaction to what he said might not be a typical reaction but like knowing who she is and some history behind these two actually kind of makes sense that like after a few years um, she would likely have a more mature response and I enjoy that kind of thing. Hey, just me. Make it fast, Richie. I'm a little busy at the moment. How did it go? Were you able to talk to him? A little. Was he totally out of his mind? He was calm for the most part. Must be heavily medicated. But he told me some interesting stuff. He claims he was working for this secret society. I want to look through his old apartment. There might be some clues left behind. I'm sure the police cleaned the place out. Who knows if it's even there anymore? I still want to check it out. Can you find the address? Can Pavarotti sing? Count to ten and I'll have it. Okay, let's see. Got it. Michael Coltrane, last known address, 952 Lincoln Avenue. Now let's see if it's still standing. You're in luck. Nobody's touched the place since 1978. And no new tenants since Crazy Mike. I guess nobody wants to sleep in Jack the Ripper's old bedroom. All the same, be careful. That's a rough neighborhood. The place is probably crawling with junkies. Thanks, I will. And hey. Yeah? I've been thinking about everything you told me before. I want you to know I'm not mad at you. It took a lot of guts to tell me all that, and it wasn't easy to hear. But I forgive you. Thanks. That means a lot to me. I don't want you to disappear again after this. I don't have a lot of friends, and I could use one to talk to now and again. I'd like that. Anyway, here I go getting sentimental when you have a case to solve. Have fun at your crack house. Yeah, I'll try. Talk to you soon. I'll be here. Hi. That's actually quite interesting. I'm glad they actually got to talk with each other, you know? And kind of semi work things out. They still have a, a lot to do, but, you know. Whoa, this place is a mess. What do you expect? It was abandoned for like a bunch of years. Hmm, it seems hollow. So, I don't know the- I can't see any use for this thing. I don't know the state of, um, the apartment when the police got here, but you think they might have found that? Uh, interesting. Because think about it. The cops would be looking for anything that might be hidden. And especially inside a hitman's place, um, you think they would check the walls? A beautiful view of one of the worst neighborhoods in the city. No thanks. But um, I could maybe see them not doing that too. That's understandable. There's something in here. Look at that. A map. I don't need to carry that around anymore. Um, let's check out the map. The map I found in Coltrane's apartment. It looks like it leads into the woods. It shows the coordinates of the hut where Coltrane held secret meetings with those people. Whoever they are. At least I hope that's where it leads. 
Um, anyways, I totally forget if I was mentioning why, um, like settings wise, some stuff, but I lowered my sensitivity. Um, it was at five, but now it's at three and it seems to work fine. And I did lower the, um, music option, uh, just cause it seemed like the music was kind of overpowering the, um... I'm not gonna lie. This place gives me the creeps. I bet no one has stepped foot in this part of the forest in years. Just seems like it was overpowering the whole, um, voice acting, which I didn't like. So it should be a little better now. I don't need this junk. There's a lot of useless junk down here. Um, let's look around. That's interesting. I'll get to it in a sec, though. A solid wooden board. I'll take it. Okay. Interesting. Uh, that looks like something, too, though. I might find a use for this wax block and that wooden stick. Okay. Interesting. I'll take this piece of rope. And 100%, there's going to be a trapdoor in this. I don't need that. A knitted basket. It must have been here for decades. Almost looks like a small table. Because there's always a trapdoor under a carpet in games and movies. A trapdoor? What did I say? Exactly what I thought. Well, well, well. What do we have here? A secret door. I wonder what's down below. Oh boy, this is not going to be good. I right, kind of creepy, but okay. There is something deeply unsettling about this place. I don't like it. I should look around and get back to the city as soon as possible. You know what? I'm actually agreeing with you on that one. I can't see anything. I can't. I can't. I can't. Looks like a bunch of junk on a table. Um, okay. I don't know. What do we have? Oh, can we make a uh, torch? I don't think that's going to work. I don't think... This is a good idea, but the wax is too hard right now. Oh, oh, okay. Um, do we have anything outside? Um, I'm not... I'm not... Yeah, 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 your complaints. Okay, go back inside. A knitted basket. It must have been here. Oh, small table. Um... Okay, wait, wait, wait. I have an idea. So, in survival situations, you can uh, create fire with a dry... Uh, two pieces of wood that Richard, are dry. this is a bad idea. Please try not to burn down the whole forest. But you have to make sure that there's a lot of friction and that both pieces are dry or it won't work. I actually made fire. But um, the dangerous part is, though, is that um, it's not even the fire that's the most dangerous. It's like giving yourself splinters or like friction burns, which you have to be super careful about. Nice. I've melted the wax. And if you're using something sharp... Call me a craftsman. I actually made myself a candle. You could cut yourself. But like... In either situation, if you have a wound, that's just asking for infection. Which is... Um... Super dangerous. Oh, it's not, um... Oh, right. I have to light it with fire. Ah, you think I'd be on, you think I'd be on the ball with this one, but I'm not. Ah, it's what it is, I suppose. 
There we go. Now that I've lit the candle, I can put this out. I don't want to be responsible for a forest fire. Um, I will say one thing that does bug me in a lot of games, this one actually does too, is when the characters are doing something, like in this case, creating a fire, um, I understand why they uh, block your view, just so it's like less an animations and such. But like, in that same regard, um, it makes it a lot harder when you have sequence of events that you have to do. Um, and where your character's now blocking hmm. everything. What's this? These two pieces of paper have some interesting symbols on them. They appear to be different languages, though. I wonder what they mean. Alright, cool. Oh, wait, wait, can I take the candle? I better leave the candle here. Nothing else... Nothing else useful here. Um, okay. There's nothing else. Alright, that's weird. We come out here, do a small puzzle, all for... Um, one item. That seems incredibly weird. I don't need that. A knitted basket. Huh. Okay. So... Um, I'm gonna... I'm gonna have the hunch. Because it's like... Sumerian... Languages or something like that? I don't recognize these symbols. Maybe Egyptian? Strange looking symbols. Maybe they don't it, look like it. It's definitely not fucking Latin. It's look, all I can tell you, it's not Sanskrit, because that's actually really nice writing. But it's like something ooh, spooky and ancient that like we have don't commonly see. Um Alright, can you help me? I'm sorry to bother you again. Can you tell me anything about these symbols? Why, of course! These are ancient Sumerian symbols. Cuneiform, to be more precise. One of the oldest forms of writing. Wow, you really know your stuff. Are you able to read them? I recognize what they are, but I have no idea how to read them. That's okay. Thank you anyway. This has been very helpful. Okay, this is helpful. Those symbols are Sumerian cuneiform. I should look into that. No point in asking Judy for help with this. She's as much of a history buff as I am a sports fan. I'll do some research on my own. Um, so are we allowed to use the computer now? Huh, what about the rule where we're not allowed to use it? Keyword, Sumerian. Let's see what this library has. Here's see? the most I recent article, knew it. published a year ago. It says, from archaeology to psychiatry. Professor Dr. Cornelius Blake, PhD, a talented professor from St. George's University, is a well-known biologist. The professor's academic interests, however, extend beyond the biology courses he teaches at the university level. Blake's research in biology has made him a contender for the Nobel Prize, but he is also a historian and one of the nation's top experts on ancient Sumer and Egypt. He is one of a handful of people in the United States capable of translating ancient Sumerian cuneiform, from which he has received several awards. His accomplishments do not end there. He is also a brilliant mind in psychology and psychiatry. Most recently, he was part of a team from Washington Medical University that made historic breakthroughs in treating several challenging cases of schizophrenia. Hmm, interesting. I should visit the university and talk to Professor Blake. If he can translate Sumerian symbols, that would be a huge help. My guess is this secret society uses this ancient language as a code of some kind. Alright. I mean, that's a pretty good idea, I guess. Um... It is a very pretty... Um, school too, with a very nice shot. Um, I don't need that. I don't. 
Can we read it then? Struggling with your bio research? Let me do it for you. Available for all types of research. Price is negotiable. 555 213 6897. Brian Kosloff. Right, Somebody see. wrote, We don't need no education. I had the same attitude when I was in school. I really don't need to wander around. I'm too old to pass for a student. It's not a high school. It's a college, isn't it? Or university? I mean, when I went to college... In I haven't got the slightest idea how to use that. Technology was never my thing. Um, when I went to college, I went to school with someone that was in their mid-30s. Um, and they were like super cool, and they didn't stick out. Hello, Professor. Just that kind of thing. Good afternoon. My name is Richard. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? I'm a bit busy at the moment, but seeing as how you've already interrupted me, what can I do for you? <sighs> Thanks for making me feel like a dick, but hey, whatever. I've read some very interesting things about you. Is that so? What about? About your work. You've published papers in an extraordinary number of fields. History, anthropology, biology, psychology. You exaggerate. I just helped with the translations. Once you know a language, you know it in every subject. And one time I helped a few people suffering from schizophrenia. That's all. Wow. That's still very impressive. It's an honor to speak to someone like you. He's being very oh, humble, to be honest. Journalists like to pitch us as academic heroes so they can sell their articles. If they wrote about my Intro to Biology course, which I teach every day, no one would give a damn. You're too humble. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. Wait, that's it? I can't search through these drawers while Blake is here. I don't need anything there. Blake keeps his workspace very neat. I wish I was that organized. I can't just take it. Blake's watching. I don't need that. I can't go there when Blake's here. What the? Oh, wait, maybe I have to actually give it to him? I'd like your help with something. I'll see what I can do, but you don't look like a student. What's this about? I understand you can translate Old Sumerian text. Is that right? That's correct. I completed my dissertation on Sumerian literature during the Third Dynasty of Ur. But I'm sorry, I don't offer tutoring on the subject. If you want to learn more about Sumerian language, you can buy my book, Forgotten Art and Literature in the Middle East. It's in the campus bookstore. Maybe another time. I'm only looking to translate one piece of paper. Can I see it? Here. Hmm. Interesting. It appears to be a particularly early form of Sumerian writing. And yet, it's been written on parchment less than 50 years old. Where did you get this? I'm sorry. That's a private matter. I'd rather not say. I'll pay you for the translation, of course. No, no. Payment won't be necessary. I relish the opportunity to dig into texts I've never seen before. Hold on a moment. What is it? Sir, you must tell me where you got this. I'm sorry. I really can't. I just... I just need time to translate it. Of course. When can I come by to... If you'll excuse me, I really must get back to work. Just let me know when I should be... Yes, yes, um... Come back in a day or two. Oh, okay. Thank you, Professor. Not a problem. Goodbye. That was weird. Why was he so upset about the parchment? Does he know something? Yeah... You know what? Despite the whole... I better call Judy and have her check him out. Despite the whole aspect of him being like humble, which is nice, he's sketchy as fuck too, so... Alright, whatever. Hi, what's up? 
Hey, Judy. Have you ever heard of Professor Cornelius Blake? Doesn't ring a bell. Look him up if you can. Already on it. What do you want to know? Looks like a successful academic. He's got degrees in science, history, literature, a lot of writing credits in journals, teaches college classes. You don't think he's one of the bad guys, do you? No, not really. After I spoke to Crazy Mike, I started poking around and found a piece of parchment with symbols on it. Turns out it was written in ancient Sumerian. Okay, and? And Blake is the only one who can translate the text. Oh my god, please get to the point. This is so boring. I found the parchment in an old shack where Crazy Mike made a deal with a man from a secret society. I think they're the ones responsible for these murders. Okay, I'm back in. When Blake saw the parchment, he started acting weird. Like he recognized it. Like he knew something. Interesting. What do you need from me? Take a closer look at him. I don't know, try hacking the campus closed circuit cameras or something. He's drinking coffee right now? He takes it with milk and two sugars. Hold on, make that three sugars. Wow, you're too good. You're right, I am too good for you. Stop trying to butter me up. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Judy. Let me know if anything happens, okay? Oh, God. He's on his fourth pack of sugar. Are, th are those Splendas? Jesus. Judy. Yeah, yeah. I'll call you if the boring old professor does anything. Thank you. Let's call it a day. I better get some rest. Um, yeah, just, um, piggybacking on a previous thing I mentioned. But, um, it's actually really interesting that, um, there's so much effort put into the voice work. Like, that phone call actually sounded like a phone call. That's so cool. Alright, let's, um, let's head back home, though. Seeing as that's seemingly what we need to do. So... Alright, let's... Alright, let's um, get going I guess. It's not like we have much else better to do. Uh, I believe we have to go back home. Time for some much needed rest. Oh, oh, okay, it's just automatic. Cool. That's the end of day one. Awesome. Alright, so this is the end of day one and the first video of our broadcast. Uh or I guess second video, I guess. Ah fuck it, I don't I don't remember shit anymore. Um and the reason we're back at the title screen this time, and not ending off uh, the uh, broadcast like we did last time in-game, is due to the fact that there's actually a long um, intro scene on day two, which I will definitely get to uh, at the beginning of our next uh, podcast. But, that means... Everyone will have to tune in to see that in the next time. So, thank you for tuning in to our frequency. This is the Rebel Lemon, signing off. So, good night and sweet nightmares.